Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, we're going to talk about important aspects of a settlement. So that could be a village, a hamlet, a city, all that good stuff. I'm going to break down what I think is important, and this will help you build stuff on the fly or also plan some of your major settlements in your game. So let's get to it. Here's the question. Why is this settlement there? And when I say that, I mean, why is this settlement there in game terms? When you, we are world building, it's fun to create all kinds of interesting places and interesting people, all this cool stuff. But we want to think on game terms sometimes because a settlement can be very important. If you're just passing through something and you're never going to see it again and it's a role play opportunity, cool. That's why it's there in the game. It just creates a fun little breather, if you will, between fights or between major plot points or however you want to do it, depending on the game style you run. But if it's something player characters are going to come back to, it needs to fulfill certain aspects. So that's what we're going to talk about first. To me, one of the primary uses of a settlement, especially in a new campaign, is to set the tone. What is it like in this area? If you imagine your player characters, which is often the case in open world, sandboxy kind of adventures, coming into this area. They weren't born here, right? They are outsiders. They're coming into this settlement, and this is a place where we can have them learn about how the area feels about different things. How do they feel about adventuring parties in general? How do they feel about the other kingdoms around, the way that the barons are treating the lands, the taxes that are happening? How do they feel about the woods or the unknown? Are they scared of monsters? Are there often attacks? Are they superstitious here? Do they all share a single temple? Or are there little shrines all over the place to different gods? How do they feel about magic? Is there a wizard that lives in the woods somewhere or a tower that they visit once in a while to learn from? Or is there a crazy nomad that lives in the woods that that's always encanting spells under the stars? right? How the village describes what's around them, how the actual people speak, what they say is going to make a huge difference into how the player characters interact with the world. And this should be, I mean, unless they just come blundering into town, if they kind of edge into town and look around a little bit, this should become fairly obvious so they can see how things are run. Are people, are there children running freely in the street, uh, you know, playing, or is the, is the streets deserted? Are there open markets where people are selling fruits and vegetables and this kind of stuff? Or when you walk into the downtown, is there like barred windows on the tavern and a weaponsmith, <laughs> right? What is this place like? And this is going to say a lot about the tone of how the player characters will interact with that part of the world. Something else we need to think about, and again, this will have something to do with the tone, is supply. So in especially old school games, Resource management is huge. So your settlements are your place where you can get resupplied, whether that is resupplied on torches and food or resupplied on weapons and armor, or depending on the nature of your world, possibly resupplied on certain magic things, potions and things, right? The settlement is where they're going to get those things. And this is one way that we can kind of create a vibe or a tension in our world. If the player characters travel out, multiple weeks to an area where there is a nearby dungeon. They have a map, let's say, and they find a small town on the way. And they say, good, this is a good place we can set up. And in this town, there's a blacksmith, sure, but they only work once in a while when a horse needs to be reshoed. Nobody has any weapons around here unless they pick them up from the city. You know, maybe there's a handful of crossbows in the town or bows from the hunters. Maybe somebody who used to be an adventurer or part of the army has a sword, but Basically, these people are not armored. They're not, you know, not using really heavy weapons. And all they could probably supply the player characters is maybe food that easily anyways. So when the player characters show up in town, and of course, they're fully set up with their plate mail armor and their crossbows and their, you know, iron rations and spikes and rope. That's cool. But then when they go into the dungeon, they come back and they need a new 10 foot pole. That's probably easy to make, right? There's probably trees nearby if it's a kind of a standard D&D-ish village, right? Maybe we can get a 10-foot pole made. Maybe we could even get spikes made from the blacksmith. But can we get our armor repaired or our sword made? Maybe not. 
So the players have to think about that and say, okay, well, we got to be careful here because if we lose something, if we have to shed our plate mail armor to swim across a pool and we don't know we can get it back, that can be problematic if there's no place to buy more armor. So we might have to either go a different way or we might have to figure out a way to bring the armor with us. We can't just throw it away the way that you might do if, let's say, for instance, you were near a big town where there's like an armor on every corner because there's a mega dungeon nearby and there's, you know, the the industry there is that, right? The supply there is going to be tons of stuff like that. The prices might be high, possibly, depending on the demand, but you're going to be able to walk in and find iron spike salesmen on every corner, whereas in a small town, you're not. So what supply is available in the town? Can the player characters build up resources there that aren't there? Like if they show up and they say, look, we're going to be delving this dungeon and we can give you wealth that you can't believe, right? Uh, You know, and, and we're not going to tell the king that you have it, but we need you to stop making horseshoes now and make us some iron spikes. Can they arrange that? This is the supply of the town. Rumors. So this kind of ties into the tone part that I talked about in the beginning. The town is where you can find information. Again, the hermit in the woods, the the wizard's tower, possibly even about the dungeon. Oh, when people go into that, that would they never come back. Somebody saw a man who turned into a wolf, you know, running across the field over there. These are the rumors that can we can use to create adventure hooks, right? If the players are there seeking treasure or possibly they're werewolf hunters, right? They're going to want those rumors. They're going to want to research them. They're going to want to dig into it. Talking to the locals, coming back, talking to merchants who pass through, this is a great use of a town. It The town exists in the world. I mean, obviously, the villagers who live there, it exists for them, right? But to the player characters, the town exists as a source of rumors, a source of adventure hooks. If you're running an adventuring type campaign where you have big towns have adventurer boards or guilds, those could be there. If you're in a small town, they might have to dig a little bit and gain trust from the locals before they start getting some of these local legends, right? And this is basically a good use for a town or a settlement. If the characters are constantly traveling around the world, just randomly exploring and they don't find any settled peoples, they won't know what might be behind that next hill. They might not hear the story about the troll, right, that's under the bridge, and then they might just cross that bridge without knowing. And maybe all the troll would have wanted was a little bit of ale, but because the player characters didn't know that, because they didn't talk to the people in the village, they might have to fight a troll. So rumors, adventure hooks, information. Again, if you're in a town and they've people have been living there a long time, talking to that elder, right, that's like, that sits on their front porch in the rocking chair and will tell you the stories about adventurers who have gone into different areas and things they have heard. Will they all be 100% accurate? Maybe not, right? You could roll for that. You could just use whatever feels logical. But these rumors, this information is one of the reasons why in a game, the village is there. So I've talked about this before, but in a kind of a standard dungeon delvey old school game, a town also represents safety. If you're running something like a open world or West Marches, as some people sometimes call it, where it's a sandbox and different groups are forming and different, you know, people playing multiple characters sometimes, the town is a place where people are safe. This is especially true if you're using like one-to-one time. When somebody goes and delves a dungeon, they come back to the town, they're just there in the town. They're paying their expenses or whatever, but it's considered that they're going to be safe. They're not going to come back to play in two weeks And then they're going to be like, oh, yeah, your character got killed in the town because there was an assassin, (laughs) right? That's just not generally what we use a town for in those types of places. And I think this is a meta level thing. If your town is a safe point where adventure cannot happen and will not happen, this should be told to the player characters or to the players, I should say. That is to say when you're your session zero, right? It's like when you go into the dungeon, hey, I'm going to run a mega dungeon campaign. This will be the safe haven here. When you are here, you can trade your you know, goods in, in your safe, you can heal, there's whatever. And that way the player characters know. If you're doing more of a we're traveling across the world campaign and they're just in some random village, maybe they can't come to expect that. Again, that comes down to your table and how you play things. But I do feel like this should be telegraphed. The thing that I really don't like personally, and again, you might love this. Let me know in the comments below. There's always somebody that loves something. Is the, you know, oh, you stayed at the inn last night? Well, a thief stole some of your gold. To me, unless that's a plot hook that the player characters can actually follow up on, and it it seems like a fun way that you play the game where everybody's got to be nervous. First of all, I think that's how you make murder hobos. 
right? That's how you get players where people complain, my player characters never want to stay in the town. They always want to camp out in the woods with their iron rations. You know, well, that's because you keep having the Thieves Guild automatically steal from them every time they walk into town. Now, that's not to say that can't be an adventure, but if it's been established up front or the play culture is that the town is safe, that shouldn't be happening. On the other hand, towns and cities and even small little hamlets can be sources of adventure. I've talked about city adventures a little bit. Maybe we'll get more into that. Let me know if you want to hear more about town and city adventures, like creating one. I don't think we've ever actually created a city adventure on this channel, so maybe we'll do that. Cities can be amazing places of adventure. If you think about things like Farford and the Grey Mouse or like those stories, they have lots of adventures in the city, and that's very fun. But again, that is something that should be known, at least on some level, to the player characters. They shouldn't just suddenly be robbed and, ha you don't have your gold anymore. I feel like that's a little bit of a gotcha and I wouldn't do that. But if people know that the city is where the adventure is, maybe the party never leaves the city or hardly ever leaves the city. This is where they adventure. That's awesome. can be really fun. The city can be full of adventure. It could be as simple as, I said, where your whole thing takes place in the city. It could be a traveling party and you end up at some inn, a lonely inn on a trader's route where they are staying overnight just to kind of have some warm food and rest a bit and something happens, right? It can be the site of an adventure, 100%. It doesn't always have to be safe. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, or was saying, is that if you're doing a, you know, what do I, what I used to call it, drop in, drop out, and people call it West Marches, this and that, where, you know, your character gets back to town at the end of adventure and then they kind of jump forward the next time they play to real time, those types of towns should generally be safe. But if you're playing adventures in town, that can be amazing. I would love to hear about your adventures in towns because I think this might be a fairly underutilized area, especially in old school gaming. Let me know about that in the comments below. So what do you think? Are there other reasons why, besides just flavor and fun, settlements exist in the game? Do you think they're important? Do you just hand wave them and say, oh, you got new gear, you rested? Or do you play out some of that stuff? Do you liven things up with negotiations? I know some people don't like that. Or do you just have people buy equipment in between sessions? I'd love to know how you use towns in your games. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and this channel, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you get notifications. Also, check the description below. You're going to find a link to my Discord server. Lots of great people talking about gaming over there. Also, down in the description, you're going to find a link to my t-shirt line. You can buy one of these if you like. It'll look all cool or geek cool. It's, it's interesting that geek is now cool. Is, it geek, or is geek cool or just nerds? Is there a difference? Let me know in the comments below. Also, my Patreon's in the description if you want to support the channel. I'll talk to you soon.